beer with another Team Talks, uh, now Team Talks number six. Here again with Sebastian, uh, one of our senior software engineers on the team. Uh, and now with a new person, first time on Team Talks, Alex Otter. It's also a senior software engineer uh, on the team. And yes, I appreciate you all uh, uh, joining again. We're going to talk about some new features today, right guys? And um, yeah. To start the conversation there, or to start maybe explaining a bit of those new features, I'll pass the mic to you, Sebastian, and we'll go from there. Hello, everyone. Uh, as you may know, with our uh, private uh, endpoints, with our subscriptions, we offer some premium extra features that you can opt in. And today we're going to cover two new features that we are going to uh, introduce pretty soon into production. Uh, first, I'm going to cover them uh, on a UX UI standpoint, and then uh, maybe some functionality, and then I'll pass my the mic to my colleague, Alex Opria, to present the more technical stuff. Nice. So I'll, nice. uh, I'll start with my, uh, my share screen. Okay, so to see the new the new features, uh, you would need to generate the endpoint. As you know, you need to go to generate endpoints and then to select the chain. Uh, but for uh, this scenario, I already generated an Ethereum um, endpoint. Let's go okay. with the mainnet. And as you see, even the price changed. And we have two new features, reinforced transactions and atomic transactions. Well, reinforced transactions is already introduced in production, but we added the functionality for you guys to disable and enable this feature. And I'll yeah. answer uh, the question on why later, but you need to choose the plan. And then as you can see, you have this new checkbox here and also the atomic uh, transaction one. And I'm going quick to question. go back. So, sorry for interrupting Sebastian, quick question. If you can answer in short words, because you know maybe some of uh, the people watching are, are not that familiar with reinforced transactions. What exactly is this reinforced transaction, and you know what 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 type of chain is available for that? So for the chains, we have every chain that uh, support uh, Fortranic protection. So everything from okay. Avalanche, Binance, Ethereum, uh, Arbitrum, uh, all all, right. all the chains that we support uh, basically Fortranic protection. And the reinforced transaction is a mechanism that makes sure that uh, we, as an RPC provider, do everything we can for your transaction to go through and to be mined to the blockchain. Okay. And this is uh, an, an extra feature that you will opt in only after you get the front running protection. I get it. I get it. So, uh, as you can see, you, we have two new icons. If you selected atomic transactions and reinforced transactions, uh, these icons will tell you that they are enabled or not. And if you want to disable or enable them, you'll go to the edit endpoints. And right now you can see you can uncheck these two or one, depending on what you want. Okay. And why, why would a user want to disable or enable this feature? So but just not leave there enable the whole time. Like why why do you have to like disable and enable? Yeah, for the reinforced transactions, we 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 did it because we had some uh, of our users requesting this. Uh, it depends yeah. on if you value more the privacy stuff or uh, the reliability of your transaction. So, for example, if I do not care uh, one hundred percent for my transaction to be uh, mined in the private mempool, I will just disable this. And uh, af if the transaction is not eligible to do that, uh, then uh, we'll make sure that we'll do everything uh, possible for that transaction to be to be uh, mined. And we are going to send it to, to the public mempool. But if you value privacy and uh, you are an all or nothing person, if you guys, for example, you want to Omnia guarantee you that if we are not able to to make it fully private, then drop the transaction and you are not interested in the outcome, then you can leave it enabled and we are going to make sure that everything is private and uh, no, uh, oh, you will have no issues with that. Nice, nice, that sounds good. Uh, for the for the atomic transactions, the UI UX, it's basically the same. So you are going to get uh, 
to this page, you are going to edit the endpoint and disable it. But for its functionality, I'll let my, my colleague Alex to take the floor and explain it. So, so yeah, just sure. going back to, before you, you touch on that, Alex, um, just going back to the atomic transactions, like is that available in every chain that the reinforced transactions are as well? Or is that a specific chains that the atomic transactions are available in? So for now, we have the atomic transaction feature enabled only for uh, Ethereum mainnet, um, yeah. Sepolia and uh, Holesky testnet because uh, we are still um, in an early stage of this uh, of this feature. Um, you will see a lot of uh, uh, chains introduced after we uh, finish the, this, this feature completely. Uh, what I mean is that uh, we try first to, to improve this, uh, receive the feedbacks from, uh, from, the, from the users, uh, have a complete feature on, on Minute, and then we, of course, we can extend to every chain supported by us. Awesome, awesome. Just just to clarify to make sure that everyone you know watching us know that the, the chains available for reinforced transactions are different than the one for atomic transactions, and especially because you explained that you're still on the test net with some stuff. Um, but yeah, so do you want to share the screen, Alex? Is that what you want to do? Yeah, Alex? please, please do. Yeah. Let's do it. Sure. Let's do it. By the way, welcome to Team Talks. It's it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So regarding this uh, this feature, I'm talking to I'm, I'm going to talk about about uh, how how stuff happens in in the backend. So behind the scene, uh, well, you see that uh, here we have a user wallet uh, in the left uh, part of the screen. This uh, user wallet is important to notice that uh, it needs to have the um, Omni RPC endpoint injected in the wallet, and uh, to generate it, uh, Sebastian just uh, show our uh, users to how to generate it. After you, you generate and inject uh, it in the in the wallet, you can start um, um, enable the atomic transaction feature in the in the dashboard, and then start sending transactions to the um, that specific endpoint. What would happen next is that um, when we receive your uh, transactions, we won't send them, uh, we won't forward them directly to the chain. But what happens okay. is that we uh, bundle them in a transaction bundle. Let's call it gene more more generic. Um, and as you can see here, uh, we can have multiple uh, transaction types. For example, we can have a, uh, an approved for a ERC-20 smart contract that you want to interact with. Uh, we can have a, a swap uh, or a trade that you want to make uh, and also mining some NFT or stuff like that. Um, so uh, it's not uh, depending, the bundle is not uh, depending only on the type of transaction, it only depends on the chain. So all the, uh, in, in this bundle, all the transactions would be um, on the same chain. That's the whole idea. Well, after okay. we bundle uh, these transactions, we send them, uh, we commit them to the latest block. And um, uh, here comes the, the atomic part in, in, uh, in the, the feature name. So the atomic part guarantees the, the user that all the transactions would uh, would be executed uh, if they are successful, but if they are not, if only one of them is not is uh, is not successful, so it's failing. All of them would be failing, such that um, okay. it won't affect affect the user uh, by I don't know leaking some funds or uh, uh, his information of the trade that he wanted to make, and um, uh, uh, maybe yeah, just uh, directly stealing his funds. So. Uh, this uh, this atomic feature not only helps the user build a bundle of transactions that uh, are guaranteed to be executed all at once or none of them, but also uh, introduces uh, um, uh, gas uh, uh, decreases for for gas costs, so saving uh, saving gas price for the user, and uh, also ease of use because uh, before this uh, this feature, the user would have to um, uh, create. Uh, themselves the the bundle and then uh, try to send them to an RPC service. We basically move that uh, that lo that uh, effort from the user to our uh, services. I get it. I get it. So, do you recommend every time I want to, for example, enable this feature, I'll go there and enable, and then after it's done, I'll disable? Uh, or is that something that you just leave it on it? Like how? Why should a user, you know, disable or enable this feature on a regular basis, right? That's, I think that would be the main question uh, uh, that I will have it about specifically sure. what you're showing. So, um, we introduced also the possibility to disable this feature because 
Okay. Uh, maybe some sometimes you want to uh, just interact with a smart contract, not necessarily trading funds, for example, just calling the calling a con uh, method in that contract, and uh, okay. you want it to to be done as fast as possible. For example, in that case, it's better is a lot better to disable the whole bundling thing and uh, make sure the, um, the transaction reaches the smart contract as fast as possible. Awesome, awesome. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, the only thing that I would like to add is for the user to know that for the atomic transaction, the time window that uh, we're uh, giving them for the transaction to be bundled is 600 seconds right now. But in the near future, uh, we are going to add the possibility in the UI for you to customize that time window. So, for example, if you want only one minute uh, to uh, for the time window, you can set it out. But for right now, it's 600 seconds. Uh, and uh, awesome. that's the only thing that I wanted to, to add in this case. Also, another, right. another interesting idea here regarding the atomic transaction feature, because um, as you can see, and as I said previously, uh, you can see that uh, it is still a developing feature, and that's why we focus still only on Ethereum right now, Ethereum uh, chain, and not uh, expanding it to other chains. Uh, we will introduce the possibility to select the um, block number that you want to, to, the, the, the bundle to be introduced in, so maybe you want it to be executed after the 10 blocks uh, or maybe after 100 blocks uh, after you committed the, the transactions. So, uh, yeah, as I said, there are still features in development and that's why we still support only one chain right now. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, uh, well, thanks for thanks for clarifying that. Uh, and I appreciate you two joining. Uh, make sure that, you know, uh, watch the other episodes as well. Whoever is watching this for the first time will, make some, will give you more context. But make sure to you know, follow our YouTube channel, keep engaging with us or X or LinkedIn and so on. We'll have some exciting things coming up uh, uh, this end of uh, 2024. So stay tuned. I appreciate you all joining. And thanks very much, guys, for being here. And have a good uh, have a good rest of your month. Cheers. Thank you as well. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye.